Welcome to U.S. Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Las Vegas and New York set for WNBA Finals matchup. Josh Allen, Bills turn tables on high-powered Dolphins, win 48-20. Could China's domestic woes keep Xi Jinping away from Apex Summit? U.S. Ryder Cup recriminations begin as regretful Zach Johnson takes the blame in defeat. Attempt to pass a tanker may have led to the deadly chemical crash in Illinois, official says. Las Vegas and New York set for WNBA Finals matchup. The Toronto Star. The New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces will face off in the WNBA Finals. The Aces are looking to become the league's first repeat champion since the Los Angeles Sparks in 2001-2002, while the Liberty is the only original franchise that hasn't won a championship. The finals will feature the last two league MVPs, with Brianna Stewart winning this season and Aya Wilson last year. The teams have split four regular season meetings this season, with New York winning a fifth matchup in the Commissioner's Cup Championship. This will be the first time in the league's history that two former players are head coaches in the finals. Josh Allen, Bills turn tables on high-powered Dolphins, win 48-20. The Toronto Star. The Buffalo Bills defeated the Miami Dolphins 48-20 ending the Dolphins' unbeaten start to the season. Bills quarterback Josh Allen had an impressive performance, throwing four touchdown passes and running for another score. Stefan Diggs caught three of the touchdowns and had 120 receiving yards. The Bills' efficient offense scored on eight of their first nine possessions. Miami had 393 yards of offense but was unable to keep up with the Bills. The Dolphins missed the opportunity to open the season with four wins for the first time since 1995. The Houston Texans won their second straight game by defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers 30-6. Rookie C.J. Stroud had another impressive game, throwing for 306 yards and two touchdowns. The Texans' victory was their first at home since December 2021. Nico Collins had a career-high 168 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Steelers struggled to move the ball on offense, and quarterback Kenny Pickett left the game in the third quarter with a knee injury. The Texans used a trick play to extend their lead and secure the win. The Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Atlanta Falcons 23-7 in a game played in London. Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence threw a touchdown pass to Calvin Ridley, who was facing his former team, and Darius Williams returned an interception for a touchdown. The Falcons have now lost two games in a row, and quarterback Desmond Ritter was intercepted on back-to-back -back throws in the first half. Lawrence finished the game with 207 passing yards, while Bijan Robinson rushed for 105 yards for the Falcons. Could China's domestic woes keep Xi Jinping away from Apex Summit? South China Morning Post Chinese President Xi Jinping may decide against meeting his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit later this year due to domestic issues and concerns about potential embarrassment from Washington, according to analysts. China has yet to confirm Xi's attendance at the summit, and sources have suggested that a diplomatic compromise is being worked on that would pave the way for a meeting between the two leaders. However, China is seeking guarantees that the US will not provoke it, and any criticism or provocative actions could cause Xi to cancel his attendance. Additionally, China's slowing economy and complicated relationships with some of the countries at the summit could also influence Xi's decision. Analysts also noted that she may not see the point of a meeting if the U.S. continues to add sanctions and empower Taiwan. However, recent interactions between Chinese and U.S. officials have raised hopes for a potential Xi Biden meeting, as both countries seek to repair ties and achieve more stable relations. U.S. writer Cup recriminations begin as regretful Zach Johnson takes the blame in defeat. Telegraph. Patrick Cantlay was accused before the Ryder Cup of refusing to wear his team issue cap because he was unhappy at not being paid to be there in Rome. The caddy of Cantlay, Joe Lockleva, wound Rory McIlroy up so much he had to be bundled into a car to prevent a car park punch-up. Cantlay played well on Saturday, ensuring USA went into Sunday with at least a glimmer of hope, but the question of whether or not he undermined team spirit to begin with remains moot. Attempt to pass a tanker may have led to the deadly chemical crash in Illinois, official says. The Toronto Star. A tanker truck crash in central Illinois that killed five people may have started when another vehicle tried to pass the chemical-laden truck, according to a federal transportation official. The tanker truck was carrying caustic anhydrous ammonia when it jackknifed and hit a utility trailer. The tank carrying anhydrous ammonia hit the trailer hitch of the other vehicle, causing a six-inch hole in the chemical container. The crash spilled roughly half the truck's 7,500-gallon load. The rest was drained and moved to a secure location for investigation. Morning bid, U.S. shutdown relief versus mixed China PMIs. Reuters. 
Asian markets may experience a boost at the open on Monday following the last-minute deal by the U.S. Congress to prevent a partial government shutdown. However, Chinese Purchasing Managers Index data showing mixed levels of services and manufacturing activity last month may dampen sentiment. The International Monetary Fund recently stated that recent policy support from Beijing is having a positive effect in stabilizing the economy, but growth needs to re-accelerate after coming in below forecasts all year. Other events likely to impact Asian markets this week include central bank policy decisions from Australia, India and New Zealand, as well as a flood of inflation data from across the region. Brandon Drury's two homers send Angels past Athletics 7-3 in season finale. The Toronto Star. The Los Angeles Angels ended their season with a 7-3 win over the Oakland Athletics. Brandon Drury hit two home runs, doubled, and drove in three runs to lead the Angels to victory. The win also marked the end of what could be Shohei Otani's final weekend with the team, as he can become a free agent after the World Series. The Angels finished the season with a disappointing 73-89 record, marking their eighth consecutive losing season. The Athletics finished with a 50-112 record, their worst since 1916. Zach Greinke pitches Royals to 5-2 win over Yankees in what could be his career finale. The Toronto Star. Zach Greinke pitched into the sixth inning and helped the Kansas City Royals beat the New York Yankees 5-2 on Sunday. Greinke, who can become a free agent after this season, has not announced whether he will retire. The 2009 Cy Young Award winner has had a challenging year, with his only other win coming in May. The Royals finished the season with a 56-106 record, matching the franchise record for losses. The Yankees finished with an 82-80 record, clinching a winning record for the 31st straight season. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your trusted observer from the Six Dimensions. Today, we had a mix of exciting sports news and intriguing international developments. Let's dive in. In the WNBA Finals, the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces will battle it out. The Aces are looking to make history by becoming the league's first repeat champion since 2001-2002, while the Liberty, the only original franchise without a championship, is hungry for victory. Keep an eye on the last two league MVPs, Brianna Stewart and Aya Wilson. It's also worth noting that this will be the first time in WNBA history that two former players are head coaches in the finals. Talk about a showdown. Moving on to the NFL, the Buffalo Bills put an end to the Miami Dolphins' unbeaten start with a dominant 48-20 win. Josh Allen and his four touchdown passes stole the show, with Stefan Diggs catching three of them. The Bills' offense was firing on all cylinders, scoring on eight of their first nine possessions. It's a tough loss for the Dolphins, who missed the chance to start the season with four wins for the first time in over two decades. In another football clash, the Houston Texans secured a solid 30-6 victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rookie C.J. Stroud continued to impress, throwing for 306 yards and two touchdowns. The Texans' win was their first at home in nearly a year. It's also worth highlighting Nico Collins' standout performance with a career-high 168 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Steelers struggled on offense, and quarterback Kenny Pickett's injury further hampered their chances. The Texans even pulled off a trick play to seal the deal. Now, that's some Texan flair. Across the pond, the Jacksonville Jaguars triumphed over the Atlanta Falcons in a game played in London. Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence connected with Calvin Ridley, who was facing his former team, for a touchdown pass. Meanwhile, Darius Williams returned an interception for a touchdown. The Falcons, on the other hand, suffered their second consecutive loss, with quarterback Desmond Ritter throwing back-to-back -back interceptions in the first half. Lawrence finished the game with 207 passing yards while Bijan Robinson rushed for 105 yards for the Falcons. London sure knows how to host an exhilarating game. Shifting our attention to international affairs, there's speculation that Chinese President Xi Jinping may skip the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC, summit due to domestic issues and concerns about potential embarrassment from the US. Analysts suggest that China is seeking guarantees that the US will not provoke them and that criticism or provocative actions could lead to Xi cancelling his attendance. China's slowing economy and complicated relationships with some countries at the summit are also factors to consider. However, recent interactions between Chinese and U.S. officials have raised hopes for a potential meeting between Xi and President Joe Biden. Let's see if diplomacy prevails. Now, let's talk about the Ryder Cup. Before the tournament, there were rumors that Patrick Cantlay refused to wear his team issue cap because he wasn't being paid to be there. The tension escalated when Cantlay's caddy, Joe Lockleva, got into a heated exchange with Rory McIlroy. 
The situation got so intense that McElroy had to be whisked away to avoid a car park punch-up. Despite these controversies, Cantlay played well, giving the US team a glimmer of hope. The question remains whether his actions undermined team spirit from the start. Talk about some fiery competition. In other news, a tragic tanker truck crash in central Illinois claimed the lives of five people. According to a federal transportation official, the crash may have been triggered by another vehicle attempting to pass the chemical-laden truck. The collision caused a rupture in the chemical container, resulting in a spill of approximately half the truck's load. Investigations are underway to determine the exact cause of the accident. Our thoughts go out to the victims and their families. On the economic front, there's some relief in the US as Congress reached a last-minute deal to prevent a partial government shutdown. This news may give Asian markets a boost at the start of the week. However, the mixed levels of services and manufacturing activity in China, as indicated by the Purchasing Managers Index data, could dampen sentiment. While the International Monetary Fund acknowledged the positive impact of Beijing's policy support on stabilizing the economy, growth still needs to pick up. Central bank policy decisions in Australia, India, and New Zealand, as well as inflation data from across the region, are other key factors to watch out for this week. Let's hope for a smooth economic ride. In Major League Baseball, the Los Angeles Angels concluded their season with a 7-3 victory over the Oakland Athletics. Brandon Drury stole the show with two home runs, a double, and three RBIs. This one might also mark the end of Shohei Otani's time with the Angels, as he can become a free agent after the World Series. It's been a disappointing season for the Angels, with their eighth consecutive losing record. Meanwhile, the Athletics finished with their worst record since 1916. Time for some off-season reflection and planning. Lastly, in a potentially career finale game, Zach Greinke helped the Kansas City Royals secure a 5-2 win over the New York Yankees. Greinke, who can become a free agent after this season, has yet to announce whether he will retire. It's been a challenging year for the 2009 Cy Young Award winner, with only one other win under his belt. The Royals finished the season with a record-matching number of losses, while the Yankees clinched a winning record for the 31st consecutive season. Baseball always keeps us on our toes. And there you have it, folks. A whirlwind of sports and global news to keep us entertained. Remember, your thoughts and questions matter too. So, what's on your mind? Share your perspectives and ask away. After all, the six dimensions are all about engaging with our wonderful audience. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the world around you. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.